of all the languages that I've studied, learnt, I've been fortunate enough to have installed inside of me over the years, there's one language that I just couldn't imagine being without. In fact, you could even call it a love affair. That is with Chinese. Now, when I say I'm in love with Chinese, I don't mean Putonghua. I don't mean Mandarin. I mean the Chinese language in everything that it is. The Chinese language as a whole, the Chinese language throughout its history from thousands of years ago up until today. I can't even remember when I started learning Chinese. I was very young and I can tell you that ever since that first day that I started learning Chinese up until now, there's almost not a single day where I haven't learned something new about the language, something or rather about the language. It's just a language that keeps on giving and it's almost a drug that you can't do without. It just keeps feeding you. It feeds your mind, it feeds your brain, and it opens up some amazing things to you. So I'm going to share with you the top reasons why I love the Chinese language. Firstly, Chinese activates the brain. So, of course, we have Chinese characters. These are not like a normal ABC writing system. And some people, when they get into Chinese characters, they'll say, oh, yes, this character looks like this. So, for example, the character of a person looks like a person. The character for big looks like somebody stretching their arms out. The character for a tree looks like a tree. The character for a forest looks like a forest and so on. However, it goes beyond that because then you start to trigger even more bits. So you're getting meaning, but then as you learn words and you learn those sounds, then you get some characters that have sound components coupled with meaning components. So you start being able to, I think it was TKN said in his book, Cracking the Chinese Puzzles, that you have guesstimables. So your brain starts to use this fuzzy logic to see a meaning component, a sound component. And inside, once you start to have this internalized, some things happen and you're able to start to predict what it's probably going to sound like and what it's probably going to mean. And this fuzzy logic just sort of hones itself in, hones itself in over the years until it just becomes part of you. So the mental activity of just the characters, the meaning, the sound, everything within the language and the way that it embeds itself inside of you is just, there's nothing else like it in any of the languages that I know. And then speaking on that, when you write in Chinese, I will often use a tablet or I'll have something installed on my phone and even since I was a kid, I can remember before we had tablets and things like that, I would go through reams and reams of just scrap paper, just doodling Chinese characters. I can remember when I was a kid, just writing the character Jia, 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 just tens of thousands of times over the years. Um, and that gets into your muscles. I learn, whenever I learn a character, I don't just learn the Kai Shu, which is like the book form of it, but I learn the handwriting form, the Xing Shu, and even the Tao Shu version of the character, because this is the way that Chinese people actually feel the characters, feel the language. And actually, the characters are so much part of the actual language. Some people say that they want to learn Chinese without having to read or write the actual characters. Maybe they'll learn it just through opinion but honestly you're putting yourself at a disservice because the characters are ah, the language it's just so much in there and so I'll sit there and it almost becomes a meditation for me just writing these characters out writing these characters out and it puts you into a state and it's just so peaceful and beautiful even to go to sleep at night sometimes my hand will be writing the character just under my pillow or I'll just be doing that and that muscle memory puts me into alpha state and can even send me off to sleep. So the muscle memory and the meditative nature of the language, again, is just something that I can't compare with other languages. And what happens as your muscles are doing that, they're actually linking into meanings. They're linking into pieces of art which are in there and sounds together. And so that's the next point too, sound. Now, if you only learn Mandarin, okay, that's, that's fine and it's good for a certain level. When I learn Chinese, you'll find that Mandarin is just the surface. And so then you might study some other dialects, but then you're eventually going to get to Middle Chinese. It's called Zhongguo Hanyu. And then you might get to Shanggu Hanyu. So this is the ancient Chinese. And when you get back to that, 
there's some amazing things that happen because as you see the way that sounds have shifted the way that it started even okay chinese is a tonal language many people know that already for people who don't know what a tonal language is now in a westerner's point of view they say oh you change the pitch it changed the meanings it's much more than that so for example ma means mother ma means hemp ma means horse ma means to scold someone except okay the pitches are just one thing but it's actually what the throat is doing as you go back in time and back over geography and you can trace this you realize the evolution of how language is produced and you can see how tones evolved this is called tonogenesis and how sounds shift and change and it gets to a point that even if you don't know a dialect in chinese or any language that's related to it you can start to predict what that word is probably going to sound like because you start noticing these patterns and that's actually one of the core focuses that i put into minecraft we actually use in thai this abu gita that the indian linguists put together over 3000 years ago and what it is really is this map of the human mouth but not only the thai or indian languages but every single language will follow patterns that you can follow on this and so i find that the shifts in sounds across chinese languages from ancient times up until now and even across dialects in modern times they follow some consistent patterns and so understanding how sounds shift through chinese as a vehicle has allowed me then to start to get very active very fast in other languages for example thai or vietnamese or even burmese just understanding how these shift now i'm not saying burmese is related to chinese however some of the shifts some of the vocab as you get in there is linked or there are some characteristics in common if it's not a meaning characteristic it's a sound characteristic and through chinese my grounding in chinese it gives me this new lease on all of these other languages which is just fantastic that's actually one of the reasons why so many years ago i was able to come up to speed so fast in thai it's because i just knew how sounds work and that coupled with my understanding of sanskrit which is another thing i'll get into in another clip but those two put together just put my language learning on steroids and it gave me a head start this again is what we do in minecraft i've realized that there are a few key components that will give you a head start on many other language learners who maybe are starting from scratch but again chinese is this fundamental engine that is i guess installed inside of me that gives me almost an unfair advantage now speaking on relations so you might get languages like japanese and korean or even vietnamese so let's just start with korean if i'm walking through the streets of seoul and i'm looking down the main street in myeongdong and i look at the signs as long as i can read the korean script which is super easy script to read i can actually see the chinese words in most of those things and you you have what's called the hanja which are the hanzi kanji um chinese characters within korean but so much of what you see in signage and official things actually come from the chinese cognates and so my grounding in chinese and especially understanding sounds from middle chinese and also how sounds have shifted even though my korean isn't fluent i can have very very accurate guesstimates at what the meanings of these things are and i can actually walk through a city and enjoy everything that's surrounding me knowing what's going on just through this subconscious interpretation of what's going around through my foundation in chinese the same in japanese i put a clip out a while ago too you have in japanese the hiragana katakana and kanji and of course kanji is a one to one but even learning hiragana katakana i put a clip out a while ago and you can see where these hiragana katakana forms have come from from the original kanji forms and again you understand the sounds why they used in japanese from this foundation in chinese it just kills me to see the guokmu in vietnamese this is the roman letters writing vietnamese because when i see vietnamese words i know exactly where many of them have come from in chinese in fact i learned most of my vietnamese through the genom that is the chinese characters some of them are chinese chinese characters some of them are characters that have been designed by the vietnamese but using the same system to accommodate for actual vietnamese words but through knowing that and having that foundation in chinese again gave me a jump start on vietnamese and i was able to come up to speed very very fast 
the tone system again is shared this yin and yang tone that i've gone through in many other clips that's shared and it's shared through so many other language that foundation is in chinese the other thing that chinese opens you up to is people the amount of people that speak chinese is phenomenal if not as a mother tongue as a second tongue so okay you're in china you're across singapore malaysia of course you're going to be able to speak it and the cool thing is you can just get in start speaking chinese and nobody bats an eye then they'll just respond in chinese and that's it but in other places so i'm going through france we're staying in a hotel and i hear people speaking chinese they're actually cambodians with some other people but they use chinese as a lingua franca and i'm able to use chinese as a base language with them because my french isn't up to speed so i'm in new york and within a couple of hours i'm meeting people talking to people and they've taken me right into the chinese community next thing you know i'm going off to queens and i'm meeting a whole bunch of people in the chinese community there and being hooked into people who are successful business people in new york so the chinese language opens you up to people that you would have never had access to if you didn't have that language and i'm not just talking about mandarin a lot of the time it's cantonese and these other dialects it's one thing to speak to say somebody in hong kong in mandarin but if you can speak in Cantonese, that goes to another level. And so when I say Chinese, it's not just Mandarin. It's learning Chinese and it's being able to switch into dialects and things. This is going to give you such fulfillment and such fantastic opportunities. And then speaking of opportunities, finally, business. Business is one area where knowledge of Chinese has definitely given me um, a step up. And whether it's in China doing business and being able to actually go and speak one-to-one -one with CEOs of companies or government ministers or whoever it is that you need to speak to, you can do that. But also in places like Singapore, I've been hired in by oil and gas companies to go in and do investigations. And it's only when we actually get down and start speaking in Chinese or mixtures of Chinese and Malay thrown in together, but it's that being able to speak to the heart that people open up and they actually start to tell you stuff that otherwise they wouldn't have said because being able to speak in Chinese their guard is put down and they're just speaking from the heart so in business being able to speak Chinese and have this affinity with the language understanding of the culture the people and the language will open up information to you that in turn is super valuable and gives you an edge on other people that just don't have it so anyway that's my love affair with Chinese. I absolutely love the language and I think until the day I die, I will never stop learning something new about the language. I'm Stuart J. Raj. Don't forget to click like, subscribe if you like this kind of stuff. Come into my Discord server. We have Chinese groups, we have Thai groups, we have groups for every different language and tech and music and magic and mentalism, everything. You name it, it's there. Scan the QR code, come in and let's continue this discussion on the other side.